let's, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about the markets here right now. And we're at a really interesting point. Of course, this week we saw a USDA crop progress report. That's having a definite impact on the mood in the markets this week. But there's a lot to talk about, about the overall commodity complex. Joining us right now is Ranulph Glanville. He is with Grain Fox out of Ontario. Hey, Ranulph, how's it going? Fabulous. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's great to chat with you again. So, uh, I, I guess let, let's start with corn and soybeans. And we had the crop condition report south of the border. Of course, corn is king when we look at the markets, and it does drive a lot of the sentiment that is out there. 75% good to excellent across the corn belt. What's your reaction to that number? Well, I think my reaction is what the market's reaction was, and, and that's a negative number in the sense of weighing on prices. When I sort of look at the USDA report that came out on, on Monday, the main message is corn planting ahead of normal, corn emergence ahead of normal, and that very strong initial crop rating, which you referenced. And so I think w really what we've seen is the concern about the U.S. corn crop that might have been there a month ago when things were really bogged down, down in the deep south in Louisiana and places like that, has dissipated because now we've got the crop in the king states of Iowa and Illinois and even into places like Michigan and uh, Missouri looking very good for this time of year. Yeah. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. I, I've heard some people talk about how the later planted corn, we'll see how it emerges because obviously we're only rating what has emerged at this point and we still have a, you know, We've still got some acres to come out of the ground. Uh, is that the is that kind of the only hope for this to kind of go sideways here off the beginning? Well, I think in the very short term, you're likely to see continued sideways to lower trade. Yes, because we've now reached sort of the stage where it's early June and people are saying, what's next? Well, what's next really for the most part, notwithstanding what you said about some areas of patchy emergence, is yields. And we won't know about that until uh, usually the July 4th time frame in the U.S. is when you traditionally think of, OK, let's get excited about what's happening with yield potential. So that's still a month away. And in the interim, in the absence of anything fresh and exciting, what you're likely to see is maybe some chart based selling um, the large funds which are in and out of these markets covered about uh, three quarters of their short in corn in the spring that helped fuel the rally and then in the past couple weeks uh, they have started adding to those shorts again yeah. so that is weighing on the market in addition to what you're talking about this fundamental news about the u.s crop yeah, I was just going to ask you about the, the the managed money and the fact that you know we are gaining in net short position in that area. And you know, just like on the upside, where sometimes we blow past where we would fundamentally think the market is or should be or could be, we see that also to the downside. And this is the this this is the timing right now, the scenario where we really start to complain about those funds and them pushing the market around. We like it on the upside, not so much the downside. Absolutely. Um, I work with Neil Townsend and he's a great fundamental anal analyst. And one of the things we always talk about is the funds don't make the market. They don't matter more than the fundamentals. But in the short term, the funds can move the markets more than you might think based on the fundamentals alone because of what you talked about. Money flow, which is a big factor in a lot of these markets. And when it's going in your favor, everybody loves it. And when it's going against you, as it has been over the past couple of weeks in corn, then everybody gets up in arms about the funds being in there in the first place. Yeah. Any thoughts on the condition of the Ontario uh, corn crop or the rest of what we see in eastern Canada? Yeah, that's a great question. I think unlike the United States, where there's really no concern, Ontario is very much a case of haves and have nots. Did you get your corn in? And the answer, if you were on some lighter soils, is generally yes. Is it up? Is it emerged? Is it looking pretty good? The answer is generally yes. And all the rain that we had in this, you know, up to this point is actually setting the crop up quite nicely, given that you're going to have some buffer against drought. It doesn't mean that if it's scorching hot in the first half of July, that there's not going to be concerns about pollination. 
But what it means is things look good if you got your corn in. If you didn't, if you're on those heavier soils, and there's certainly some uh, areas like that, what we see is people didn't get their corn in or they didn't get all of it in, or they're thinking about maybe switching to some soybeans or some shorter season varieties. So it's very much an, a more of an uneven situation across Ontario. Yeah. I had a grower call me yesterday and said he hadn't planted an acre of corn yet. Yeah. You know, what, what, she, how far should he drop his heat unit or should he just switch to soybeans in entirely? Of course, I passed them on to Peter Wheatby Johnson. Uh, I am not going to provide that kind of economic advice. That was good advice. That was yeah, very good advice that's, indeed. indeed. That, that's pretty good. Um, any indications or what are you hearing thoughts on when we do get the U.S. soybean, you know, the first crop condition report for soybeans next week? What, what's the expectation there? Well, I wouldn't, I don't have a number offhand, but I think the expectation is very similar to corn, which is a strong initial reading, likely to confirm what people are already thinking. I don't think there's anybody out there at this moment who's too concerned about soybean acres. Soybeans tend to be a crop that are planted after corn, so there's still soybeans going in, but Really, at this stage, between the combination of still having time to get soybeans in, lots of soybeans already being in the ground in the U.S. ahead of normal, emergence ahead of normal, again, hard to imagine the crop rating being anything but quite historically strong. Meanwhile, those last few corn acres uh, in areas which are wet, some of those could get switched to soybeans. So that initial crop rating won't tell us anything about that, but that's something to keep in the back of our mind as we move through the end of June USDA reports and further into the summer. So Ranoff, with all this being said, and in the really good start from an agronomic perspective, maybe not from a market perspective, from an agronomic perspective, we're off to a, a very good start south of the border. Corn and beans really do drive the market. How, how does this impact your marketing plan? Like, what are some of the considerations you need to have right now? And obviously, there's a huge wide variety of the amount of crop that people have pre-sold or yeah. unsold, like what, what they're exactly doing. But what are some of the considerations they need to be asking themselves right now? Well, I think the three initial thoughts that occur to me with the corn market, number one, this is still a weather market. So we got a rally in the spring based on some early concerns about planting and uncertainty. Now we're getting a sell-off based on ideas. The U.S. crop is huge and great and wonderful. And by the time we get into the summer, perceptions could change. I'm not saying you're going to see a runaway bull market, but there is only a slight change required in the perception to cause some of the prices to swing the other way. So if you're a corn grower, I wouldn't Personally, if you've sold some ahead, I wouldn't be dumping more into the teeth of this break. That's the first thing I'd say. The second thing I'd say, and it's more of a long-term issue or a mid-term issue, is that some of the issues that we're seeing elsewhere in the world, such as with the Russian wheat crop, suggest that over time we could see some more corn get pulled into feed rations in places like Europe where there may not be as much wheat available. And so in the midterm, that's actually supportive for corn. So we don't want to get overly bearish too soon on the forever and ever outlook for this market. But the third thing I would say is that in a general sense, corn has come through a very strong bear market. And that began in the early part of 2022, the calendar year. And it appeared to sort of end this past winter. And now we've got this rally. Bear markets tend to resolve themselves more into choppy sideways trading ranges rather than new bull markets. So along with everything else, I think that is a message to corn growers that we really want to sell into rallies, but you want to keep pricing expectations realistic. As soon as prices start going up, you don't want to start thinking in the back of your mind, okay, we're going back to where we were in 2022, because there's no indication of that right now. What we're seeing is a transition out of this bear market that was in effect for a couple of years, and that's going to be a transition. Yeah, on on Dees Corn, we, we really like, it, it seems like the market kind of 
continues to test that if you look at the last six months like that that 460 level kind of where we are now right so that's definitely something to follow and what i'm hearing from you there on on those considerations is over top of all of that is you're you're speaking about discipline and in order to have that marketing discipline you really need to know your costs and and where you're at on that, because that is going to assist you in applying that discipline that you're talking about. It, it, correct? I, I think that's accurate. I mean, there's the old saying that the market doesn't care what your cost of production is, but it is very important nonetheless to know your cost of production. And I think the way the marketing year is shaping up for corn, it is likely to be a fairly subdued pricing environment. So depending on your risk tolerance and your overall approach to farm marketing, you may be better off sweeping some money off the table through some forward selling when there is what you believe is a, a moderate or a small profit on the table, keeping a little bit in case there's a larger rally. But this isn't a year that's shaping up to be a uh, gamble and hope for the big home run because, you know, as they say, you're likely to strike out. Yeah. Not a year for the hockey stick. 